Hey neighbor, welcome back to Beyond AR TV. My name is John and recently I came across a few of my first when it came to music and I decided that I would do that age old cliche or at least a form of it where YouTuber talks about their first time with something. Nostalgia is a fun friend, a warm embrace and sometimes it can be nice to stroll back down that lane to see where I came from, things that inspired me early on or just maybe the embarrassing place that I got my start, whether that be my first concert, my first pair of headphones, or anything else first related to music or my videos. Yeah, I guess this is a way for me to open up a little bit and show you more of me. Speaking of first times, before we get into it, I remember the first time that I ever had to sign a PDF document and I had no idea what I was doing. That's actually where today's sponsor, Wondershare, comes in. A lot of you out there watching are still in school, and PDF Element from Wondershare makes it fast and easy to edit, convert, and create PDFs. You can scan files and convert them to PDFs with ease, or use their drag-and-drop system to open and edit files from your hard drive. It's super simple to drag and replace images within an existing PDF, or to even create a blank one from scratch to get the ball rolling on whatever project you're tackling. Having a PDF editor that makes your life easier easier and not harder is the only way to go. Check out the link in the description down below to start your free trial of PDF Element today. And if you decide to buy the full version, then click the link down there to find out how you can save even more. And if you review the product on Amazon afterwards, then you get a free $5 gift card. Thanks again to Wondershare for stepping in to sponsor this video. Get PDF Element at the links in the description down below. And now let's get to the first one of my first times in music. That was a tongue twister. There's nothing like a great pair of headphones that you have a ton of memories and connections with, whether that be bus rides, train rides, car rides, or just walking through the mall or school avoiding people. And I actually only have one of my pairs still. It was around the same time, but this was the first pair that my mom ever gave me. These were actually some JVC marshmallow earbuds. These things were really nice back in the day. I always loved them so much. They're extremely comfortable. Every now and then I'll still pop them in and they still actually work. Now, this wasn't my first pair. This was my first more legit pair of earbuds, I suppose. I think my first actual pair was this, unfortunately. It's a pair of Emersons from Dollar Tree, and I went through those Dollar Tree headphones all the time because uh, my parents wouldn't buy them for me. They didn't have any extra money to do that. I didn't have extra money to get nice ones, so I just kept buying dollar store ones, and they would burn out in like a week, and then I'd round up another dollar and go buy another pair. My first concert was 303, featuring Down with Webster and also Hello Goodbye in the Secret Handshake. What a lineup, am I right? This was 2010, and it was the first legitimate concert that I ever went to on my own. It wasn't something that I like went to with my parents or anything. This was my first legit concert experience, and I was so stoked at the time because Don't Trust Me was a huge song from 303, and My First Kiss with Kesha, and me and my friend Craig were just liberated in the sense that we're going and we're gonna cut loose and go crazy. And I filmed way too much of the concert on my flip camera, and it's embarrassing to look back upon that footage and just see myself just, uh, just sweating it out with my flip camera at a 303 concert with a bunch of other really sweaty people. It's not exactly the best concert memory, but hey, I mean, I met Down With Webster afterwards, I met Forrest from Hello Goodbye, and also the secret handshake, although he looked miserable to meet me. The first time that I ever heard my favorite song of all time, which is Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day, was while I was over at my friend Phil's house. We were skating with some other people, some other friends in like his driveway and around the area, like out in the road. And he had been playing stuff like Lincoln Park and Green Day all day. But I have a specific memory of hearing Boulevard of Broken Dreams and the F-bomb dropping, what's fucked up? And I was like, <gasps> what's that? And then his friend Jared's like, oh, he said, fuck. And this kid Jared was like in first grade at the time. And I was like, oh, oh, wow, that's what he said, huh? Cool, that's a dirty word because I'm a good Christian boy at Christian school. Ooh, getting a little risque up in here. My first kiss song. What was playing around the time of my first kiss? 
This is an estimate because I know this had been playing in the background. We had been playing Rock Band and there were friends around and Monsoon by Tokyo Hotel was in the soundtrack for the first Rock Band game. And I still do like that song, but I'm 99% certain that's what happened as I awkwardly just made the move and kissed this girl and it was fun but nerve-wracking but also just like I, I distinctly remember music in the background and I'm almost positive it was Tokyo Hotel which is weird looking back on it like of all songs to been playing it was that the first genre of music that I ever loved was country music I was a good old southern boy I had an accent for the longest time and I'm very glad that I took speech classes in college because that really helped me eliminate that dialect. But I grew up on the music of like Tim McGraw, Alan Jackson, Rascal Flatts, Sarah Evans, and all of those country artists that were very prominent in like the late 90s, early 2000s. And I've come to be able to embrace that. For the longest time, I was ashamed and embarrassed of that, and I ran as far away from it as possible. But now seeing the current state of country that it's at now, it makes me love and appreciate the more genuine and wholesome stuff that I grew up on, because there's genuinely some great stuff that I still go back to. I've got a country favorites playlist on Spotify if you guys want to follow it. First music crush was none other than our Canadian friend Avril Lavigne. In the early 2000s, she was the alternative pop punk almost heartthrob in that scene, in that community. She was like cool with the guys, but also she was so, so pretty. Around like 2002, 2005, that was when I was just hard eyes, left and right, heart popping and pounding out of my chest, having palpitations over her appearing on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which I believe is the first time that I ever physically laid eyes on her. Then I started taking notice of the music videos and it was just Crush City. I had it bad. I had daydreams of like going to her concert and her like calling me up on stage. It was, it was weird. It was bad. And I'm still not over it. The first song that I ever learned to play that I actually liked, that's the asterisk, because obviously there's like hot cross buns and all of these other songs. My mom was a piano teacher for the longest time, so I was kind of forced to take piano lessons from her for a while, and God knows I don't even know how to play here because it's like the country music thing, I ran far away from it unfortunately. I can play somewhat by ear, that's how my dad plays, he taught himself, and I picked up some of that from him, but the first song that I ever ever remember learning to play was Clocks by Coldplay and I really wish I could still do it. I wish I could break it out now for you, but I can't. From boys to men. That's right. I finally upgraded my speaker system for the first time ever in 2012. I guess it was right after Christmas that year. I finally had some extra cash. I had been listening to music either on headphones or God forbid my terrible laptop speakers, which I cringe even thinking about that audio quality that I was listening to albums on and then reviewing them. But that's in the past. My first ever speakers were these, and they have a subwoofer. It's the Logitech Z313s, and these honestly are not bad speakers still. This was my first love. I just will never forget unboxing these from Best Buy, bringing them home. I lived in an apartment at the time, and I was blasting this so loud. I was there with my friend Ben, and we were trying them out, and thank God nobody else was home. It was like the middle of the afternoon, but I was blasting these things, and it was rattling the entire apartment because I was like, let's see how loud they'll go. Romance is in the air and hearts are a flutter. It was my first date and what was the first song that I played pulling out of the parking lot? Well first, let's set the picture. Me and this girl were going to my junior prom, let's call it, but proms weren't what we had at Christian school because dancing was considered sinful. Uh, I picked her up and I went over to her house. I did the whole floating hand thing because I was too scared to touch because I was most definitely 100% a virgin. Even though I had dated before, I had never officially gone on a date. I had had a girlfriend before, but I don't think we really considered it going out on dates. We were just always like hanging out and this was officially a date and I was officially terrified. Well, the first song that comes up on my iPod, and I had this all planned out, was The Curse of Curves by Cute Is What We Aim For. 
Why I chose that song, I'm still not entirely certain, but rumor has it, she still tells the tale of nervous, sweaty boy that played Curse of Curves in car on awkward 30-minute car ride to get to venue for not prom. And even though I had burned CDs before this, like so many, from Sub 41 to Green Day to Linkin Park, White Stripes, and more, the first CD that I ever recall purchasing with my own money was AFI's December Underground, and what do you know, I still have it. This CD was on sale at Circuit City. I kid you not, back when that was actually still a thing. I remember tricking my mom into taking me to Circuit City because I said I needed something for school, and instead, I just knew that these CDs were on sale, and AFI was absolutely the first one I had to grab because I was so obsessed with Miss Murder at the time. How many people can say that the first vinyl record that they ever owned, that they ever purchased, was something that was rare, that's a collector's item, that was sought after, they got something cool, and they kind of stumbled onto it by accident? It's the Hot Topic Gold Pressing of A Fever You Can't Sweat Out by Panic at the Disco that was originally reissued in the fall of 2012. It was gifted to me by my parents for my birthday that year, and uh, here it is. Oh yeah, that's right. My dumbass ex-friend, that's right, no longer a friend, not just for this, but for many different reasons, dropped it on the ground while he was helping me move. And it fell, and it cracked in the parking lot, and it was completely unusable. The first music festival that I ever attended was Bonnaroo in 2012, and it was a hell of a lot of fun. I'm so glad that I went to that and had that experience. It was mostly kind of before the whole smartphone era was ushered in, and not everybody was there for like fashion or for selfies or for getting something for the gram or whatever. There were genuinely people just down on the farm having a great time. We camped the entire time, which was an experience that I wouldn't trade for anything. It sucked, it was kind of nasty, but also it's a whole part of the experience and I just liked going without all of the modern amenities for whatever reason. The whitest kid you know, right here, right in front of you, my first ever rap or hip hop song. It was Get Low by Lil Jon and the East Side Boys featuring the Yin Yang Twins. That's right, any of my Need for Speed Underground fans out there will know exactly what I'm talking about, because every time you load up that games menu, you hear this. To the window, to the wall, to the wall. Bless you and your many talents, Lil John, and also bless you for appearing in the Andy Melanakis show in the mid-2000s. The first band shirt that I ever purchased was my Panic at the Disco shirt. This came from Hot Topic, and this was November 2009. It was shortly after the release of New Perspective. I think it was John Walker and Ryan Ross. They had just left the band, and the exclamation point got added back. And I was excited, with an exclamation point, for that. And then I ran out and bought that shirt because finally, I was almost like 18. My parents eventually just gave up fighting me on the whole devil music thing. And I wasn't allowed to own band shirts really before that, but I said, fuck it. And I bought one and I started wearing it. And you know what? Within a month, I had a girlfriend. I shit you not. Embarrassingly enough, my first ever circle pit was at the Boston Manor concert at Sonic Temple 2019. A 27-year-old man who had never been in a circle pit, but why would I want to do that? I just, I, I have no interest in moshing or getting into it with other people. I'm fragile, okay? Don't break me. But there was a very chill circle pit going on because it was very hot out and people were essentially just running laps. So I started running laps right there with everybody else, and it was, uh, it was an experience. The first time I ever got drunk, it was in college, of course, but I went to a community college, so it's not like there were parties on campus or anybody living on campus, because you couldn't. But my first song that I remember hearing while everybody was drinking and when it actually set in was Party Poison by My Chemical Romance. Danger Days had been out for about a year at that point. This was November 2011. I was with my roommate and some of his friends and also a couple of my friends and we started playing this card game and I had had a drink before and I had never actually gotten drunk, but this time I went all in 
and I just got annihilated. And I remember running around the room just shouting the lyrics to Party Poison in people's faces, and they were like, is this dude gonna be okay, or is he gonna eat my face off? Finally, my very last first time that I put on the list today was the first song that I listened to after graduating high school, after finally getting out of that damn building that had been choking me for four years. That was Fat Lip by Sum 41. I was a rebel with a fast car. I had a Ford Mustang and I drove out of the parking lot blasting Fat Lip with a middle finger up in the air thinking I was the biggest badass in the entire world. And you know what? In that moment, I was. Thanks for tuning in to see all about all of my interesting first times. I know some of them were way TMI, but that is what it is. You chose to click on this video and you're the one still watching, so joke's on you. If you are, then please hit the like button here and don't forget to check out the gracious sponsor of today's video, Wondershare and their PDF element that's linked in the description down below. Other than that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then please do that, ring the bell. And if you wanna check out a couple of recent videos, then hit these links right over here. All of my social media accounts can be found linked in the description, including my Patreon, if you wanna help support both of my channels. Other than that, I'll see you soon for more on Beyond AR TV.